Hey there, guys. How's it going? Welcome to Breakfast All Day. I am Christy. That is Alonzo. Finally for you this week, we've had some giant movies with big star-studded casts, but the best movie of the week is the smallest one and the biggest, depending on what we're talking about. <laughs> um, oh, it's called Red Rocket. <laughs> this is, uh, yes, the latest from uh, Sean Baker, uh, the guy who gave us Tangerine and The Florida Project and so many other really great movies about communities that you don't often see portrayed in films. And this one is set in Texas City, Texas, where uh, Mikey, a.k.a. adult film star Mike Saber, comes back to town um, with the clothes on his back. He's got no money, he's got no prospects, and somehow manages to convince his uh, estranged wife and her mother to take him in. Um, and uh, from there, he basically reveals himself to be just a complete manipulative piece of shit <laughs> and uh, definitely has his eyes set on Strawberry, the young lady who works the cashier of the local donut shop, and seeing her as potentially his ticket back into the big time world of uh, adult entertainment. Um, this is all also just coincidentally happening during the summer of 2016. So <laughs> we keep seeing trump's name and hearing his voice and it's a movie about a manipulative dirtbag so uh, connect the dots as you will see i didn't interpret the setting as connecting the dots between mikey and trump i viewed it as he set this movie sean baker set this movie in small town texas mm -hmm. texas city is like way the hell down there it's like on the way to galveston right right near and, almost the coast yeah yeah and so i viewed it as this is the kind of place where Trump took hold because people who live there lost hope because they didn't have jobs. They didn't have prospects. We right. see Mikey before he falls for strawberry and tries to angle his way back into the porn industry. He applies for jobs everywhere, like all over town. As he says, I even look for work at Luby's. And if you've <laughs> lived in Texas, you know what a Luby's is. They are these um, very cheap cafeterias. They are not the finest dining establishments in the world. And so I viewed the Trump element of it and the setting of it as this explains why someone like that could take hold in a place like this and how this kind of place exists all over the country. I think it could be both. Yeah. I think, I, I mean, I think that's a, that's a certainly a legit mm -hmm. read, but I think at the same mm -hmm. time, this is somebody who is basically like a glib, self-serving, slick you know, showbiz guy who has a line of patter for everybody. And for some folks it works and for some folks it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, but he is like always out to better himself, even mm -hmm. though he plays a good game of making it seem like he might be interested in you and your own problems and not just his own. Um, either way, I, you know, however you look at that, that aspect of the film, it's not, they're not hitting you over the head with it. This is sort oh, of- Oh, not at all. It's so threaded. fascinating. Go ahead. No, it's just it's threaded into the background. But what this is really about is just this this character study of this charming, despicable asshole uh, that Simon Rex plays to a T. Uh, this is one of the most sort of riveting shitheel performances I've seen since Kirk Douglas in The Big Carnival. Um, <laughs> he's that you can't stop watching him, even though, you know, he is bad news for everybody that he comes in contact with. Oh, he's a raging narcissist and a sociopathic liar. I mean, he, yeah. he's an awful human being. And the person who he sets the sights on, who he, you know, gloms onto, I mean, she's 17. Yes. She's very young and she looks very <laughs> young. And so that's one thing that the Sean Baker does here so well is he finds this balance of like, you're on board with Mikey because you kind of because he's charming as hell. He's so charismatic. He's he's cute. He's funny. He's and got you're great following energy. him into the movie, so you don't right. necessarily know at the beginning what his whole deal is. Even you see the way everyone regards him once they see that he's back in town. Some people think he's a piece of shit. Some people think he's like, oh wow, Mikey. Like he was a celebrity who got yeah. out Ooh. and they came back. Um, but there's this undercurrent of danger that Sean Baker so skillfully like weaves into this larger than life, crazy, funny story. Like you're kind of just holding your breath, like, oh God, where is he going to go with this? And that level of tonal balance and that level of examining 
a specific place and time in the culture in America is like what I think maybe Adam McKay is going for. <laughs> I think Adam McKay is going for it in a much larger sense in trying to open your eyes to what's happening in this country, um, but just doing it with like a much smaller budget and a much smaller cast and much more skillfully and subtly. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think that's that's sort of the difference here. Like, you know, uh, Don't Look Up is a movie that is constantly telling you what it's about. And Red Rocket is not. But Red Rocket, if you are paying attention, and, and Florida Project and Tangerine and some of these other mm -hmm. films, these are about, like, life in America, as it is lived by a lot of people in this country. And it's about the context of opportunity or lack thereof as it exists in people's lives, you know? And, and so these movies almost feel like they're reportage in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, the, I, I just... I, this is the time of year where we get thrown so many awards movies that are like long for the sake of being long. And this one is a little over two hours, but I never felt yeah. like it was that long. No. I was yeah. so enmeshed in the story and the, the, the whole community that is created here. Like, you know, the, the, the you could do an entire movie about the mother-in-law. Like that's a woman who's got stories, you know, <laughs> of the, 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 the family that handles like the local, you know, marijuana trade that he winds up going to work for and like dealing weed for like all of these really interesting characters and in what feels like a really, you know, lived in community. But, you know, Simon Rex is great in this. Susanna Son as mm -hmm. Strawberry, who's a newcomer, is dynamite so, so charismatic and the character you know it, it, i think in lesser hands it would have been so easy for her to be like oh you know the the poor imperiled virgin and he's the 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 big bad wolf from the city who's gonna like do terrible things but that her character is constantly so smart and surprising and going in areas that you wouldn't expect mm -hmm. between the way that she's written and the way that Susanna son uh, uh, acts it out it's it, it's a fascinating and you never know exactly where it's all going to go and what sean baker does here and also did in tangerine and florida project as you mentioned is like he's never gawking at these people no there is no exploiting them mm -mm. like ha ha look at these look at these poor white trash in small town america you know right. look at them with their, and it's not poverty porn either it it's not like no and it, it. there is there is kindness and there is generosity and there is seemingly a, a genuine interest in exploring their stories yes and the performances are really strong and they feel like real people they never feel like you know they're like animals in a zoo that we're like gawking at and we can right. feel smugly superior to there's um and that's that's really true of, of tangerine it's really true of, of the folks who live in the motel in florida project like and it's, i would it's also recommend no, so I would also recommend a Sean Baker movie that didn't get as big a play as the two films you just mentioned is Starlet from 2012, which also that. deals with characters who work in the adult film industry. It's mm. great. Uh, it won the uh, the Altman Award at the Spirits that year, and you can now rent it on Canopy and Tubi. Maybe I saw it. I don't think I did. But like, you get the sense that he has spent time in this place with these yes. people and really wants you to see them truthfully for who they are and not like, ha ha, you elite critics on the coast, you elite industry insiders la laugh at these freaks. It's not that at all. And no. it, it's, it's such, it's a really tender balance that he strikes within a story of a guy who is just despicable yeah. and selfish, you know? That's the thing, like he, Baker is, I think one of our most humane filmmakers, but this is probably the first time that his central character has just been like the worst, you know? <laughs> and, and it still works, like his, tone still works even with a character who's just like so awful and yeah um, i don't know about you but i wanted to see him figure it out i wanted to see him win maybe not win the way he thinks he wants to win but i wanted right. to see him get out of this and be okay i i was i was so fascinated in watching where it was going to go that i uh -huh. trusted that wherever we wound up it was going to be interesting even if even if somehow he'd managed to find some level of redemption but yeah it becomes more about like just don't drag anybody else down with you that's that's the main thing yeah. that i'm worried about here but yeah this is this is one of my favorite films this year Cool. I also want to mention really fast, I'm not going to spoil how they do it, but the use of in sync bye 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 <laughs> as a through line yes. in this film, it's funny, but also it harkens to like when Mikey's heyday would have been, right? Like True. 20 <laughs> years ago, yeah. he's riding high, he's winning AVN awards, <laughs> he's winning for best oral three years in a row or whatever yeah. it is. And so, like the whole era of like late 90s, early 2000s, like boy band is, you know, 
his and peak it's, time. It's also like right before the internet really kind of kneecapped a lot of adult entertainment mm. because, you know, people weren't getting it so easily getting it for free. Uh, you know, and so I think that that, that mm. was a seismic shift in that industry. And so that would have happened right around the time of that song. So. Yeah. Anyway, it's really good. Um, where is it playing? It's 824. But where it is, it is playing? exclusively in theaters right now. Okay. Um, and it is, you know, definitely going to be, I think, part of the awards conversation. So look for it to be expanding and, you know, streaming within the next few months. So keep yes. an eye out if it's not near you, if you're not comfortable in theaters yet uh, you know this will be there for you but you should definitely check out red rocket yes. uh, i'm saying 9.2 i'm saying nine so our numbers are 9.1 red rocket's really good and yeah. uh and go check it out By and uh means. there's a whole lot of simon rex in this movie yes and <laughs> it, this is uh, one of the year's great performances yes. uh, I, I, so good good on him uh so hey thanks everybody for watching like this video subscribe to our youtube channel check us out at be fast all day on twitter instagram and facebook and definitely check out our patreon page at patreon.com slash be fast all day you get to watch videos like this with no commercial interruption plus review is uh, recaps rather of tv shows right now we're talking about uh, hawkeye on disney plus as well as uh, the great on hulu and lots of other cool stuff that only our subscribers get so you ought to become one uh, patreon.com slash be fast all day have a great week everybody take care of yourselves and each other and we will see you next time bye